Hello there, Trabant. Hello, Tito. Would you like to see a video from the U.S. Embassy in Beijing from three days ago when they celebrate I... Independence Day? Well, yeah, let's see. I think that there, there was a choir singing here. Are they singing the uh, the U.S. anthem? Let's have a look. Okay. Well, hang on a second. They're singing the Chinese national anthem. Wow! So wow! You can see uh, the the kind of <laughs> the look on the uh, uh, the U.S. I don't know if this is the ambassador. Uh, yeah. You can see there he's looking at them uh, a little bit confused. He doesn't look very pleased. No, I mean, what, what, what's the logic behind this? This reminds me of uh, the movie Borat when uh, uh, Borat was singing the fictional Kazakh anthem to the uh, tune of the U.S. national anthem. <laughs> yeah, maybe or, that would uh, be better. Uh, yeah, that would be even worse, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so... Maybe, maybe in China, or oh sorry, maybe the Chinese at the American, uh, the Chinese embassy in Washington on the Chinese National Day, October 1st, maybe they sing American anthem as a reciprocity. Let's, let, let, let's take a look. Here is a footage from uh, a few years ago. Let's see it. Okay. The flag is going up. Uh huh. Oh, still the Chinese anthem. And look, look how he it. throws that corner into the air. <laughs> if anyone knows the Chinese terms for this, please let us know. Uh, this is one of the biggest honors you can get, aside from raising the f actual flag itself. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of voices. Seems like everyone singing. <laughs> Look at them lined up. The entire embassy staff, yeah? <laughs> so organized. Probably they did several rehearsals for this special occasion. Sure they they did. Last year. I'm sure they did. Yeah, children wearing red scarves, proud pioneers. <laughs> so you know, looking. just just to you know, for the extra effect, they played it at the <laughs> U.S. Embassy as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow! So they played the anthem everywhere. So I wonder when do they play the American anthem? It's a good question. <laughs> wow! Yeah, it's an interesting story about the anthem. This uh, it's called March of the Volunteers. Right. It was uh, during the Japanese invasion of Manchuria. Uh, this song was, uh, the li lyrics were written by a communist playwright, Tian Han, in 1934. And it was set to melody by Nye R. And this song was so popular that even the nationalist general Dai Anlan Dai Anlan design, uh, designated uh, it's to the uh, to the anthem of the 20th Bet division, which fought in Burma. Wow! Really, I, I never knew that. That's interesting. yeah, interesting. Yeah, and but during so the, the, the 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 writer, uh, the lyricist Tian Han, right? He must have been venerated in uh, the PRC after 1949, right? Yeah, one would think so. But well, let's visit, let's uh, yeah. let's have a look. Oh my god, is that him? I can see his name crossed out. It says Tian Han, the characters are crossed out. And it says Fang Geming, counter-revolutionary, here at the top. Oh, yeah, 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 if yeah, that is him, know. he does not look very happy. No, no, he didn't receive any honors during his life. He, during the Cultural Revolution, 
In the 60s, uh, Tian Han was criticized and placed in prison, where he died in 1968. Well, basically, they the, the glory him. you get for you know <laughs> making a no song reward. that was uh, adopted as the anthem. My yes. oh my! So, so that was a, that was a terrible ending. So the, after this, the song was briefly, unofficially replaced by another song. Oh. Then reinstated, but was played without lyrics. And in 1978, was restored to official status with altered lyrics. And finally, the original version was restored in 1982. So this is the story of this the March of Volunteers the Chinese national anthem that is played everywhere at every occasion even at American embassies and you know the story is a little bit grim yeah it is grim yeah it kind yeah. of reminds me how the uh, <laughs> Russian anthem <laughs> kept changing you know from the Soviet Union until the present day but uh, at least the melody remained the same to mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. some fictional content continuity but let's see let's let's have a look over here here we can see uh, the US and uh, Chinese flags again what uh -huh. is the occasion though well the person on the right side is Jenna Yellen the US Treasury Secretary visiting Beijing at this very moment she just finished uh, finished a meeting of uh, American businessman uh, operating in China where she was listening to them uh, uh, they were apparently presenting or some opinions about what troubles they are facing doing business in China I think they are facing some troubles now and uh, this uh, lovely gentleman that they uh, brought out uh, almost of retirement to meet her uh -huh. this is uh, Liu He he was uh, one of the most influential economic guides uh, until he retired from uh, state and party positions recently. But you know, he apparently he went to Harvard, so maybe they can talk English together. So maybe <laughs> that's why they brought him out. Uh huh. Or well, maybe he was the same age as the U.S. Uh, yeah, Secretary, so know. they thought they, they would have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get along. Uh, how yeah. Great. But you mentioned like these these kind of problems that U.S. companies uh, are facing, right? For example, here we have the case of Micron. Okay. So what happened to Micron recently is that uh, was banned in China because the Cyberspace Administration of China concluded after seven week seven week probe into Micron products announced that uh, the U.S. chip maker had failed to pass its cyber security review and uh, there is some significant uh, risks to national security yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are yeah that was the reason so uh, Micron has been uh, I guess banned from China but yeah, uh, then what yeah. companies are going to you know fill in the gap well, it's going to be the yeah. domestic Chinese companies, right? Probably, probably they are, They must be sure they can replace the the microchips by somebody else. So it seems it seems kind of another uh, step by China in this kind of a tit for tat uh, <laughs> war uh, exactly. with with the United States, right? The U.S. Okay. has uh, you know tried to get some of its personnel back uh, into the United States and you know they've mm -hmm. been wanting to uh, put uh, more restrictions even have other governments put restrictions on China the obvious case we can see here is with uh, ASML here we can see one of its machines uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. because ASML is able to uh, make machines that can produce one of the uh, smallest uh, types of chips that people can currently make and mm -hmm. uh, China can produce some of the larger microchips but they are um, according to some estimates between five to ten years behind 
in the production of uh, the newest technology. Mm. This particular this particular uh, manufacturing equipment, microchips manufacturing equipment, is made only by three countries at the moment, uh, yeah. and that's uh, the Netherlands, uh, Japan, and I believe Taiwan. Yeah. No, US. The US. Oh, okay. US is the. Uh, I think they they have their. Uh, some of the chips are produced in uh, uh, Taiwan, but we are talking about the countries that can produce the machines that make the chips themselves. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So the uh, US was leaning on the Netherlands and eventually they reached agreement and Netherlands imposed some export controls on this microchips manufacturing equipment. And... Uh, the reasons was uh, national security. Yes, national because security. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm sure that you know, China would uh, rather like to steal this technology rather than you know having to spend time for between five to ten years and money to research it. <laughs> no, they would love to. <laughs> Why not steal but, it if it's there? <laughs> but they need the machines firstly. To yes. reverse engineer them, and this this kind of uh, slow down their efforts so to achieve this, is, this goal. This is not so easy, but uh, you know this is one of the one of the examples. Uh, and Micron is uh, obviously a company that uh, you know that the Chinese uh, feel that uh, can be replaced by Chinese companies, right? So they uh, they. I might want to say to the U.S., okay, you know, if uh, you don't uh, want to help us with uh, our chips and uh, keep your experts here, you know, and we can kick out uh, your other companies. Yeah, there's always some retaliation, tit for tat action. Like uh, recently, recently China... Uh, impose some restrictions or some export special export license for exporting gallium and germanium here we go here is uh, gallium mm -hmm. and here is uh, germanium so these are all uh, metals relatively rare China has I think the largest deposit in the world uh, other countries have their own deposits as well the problem is, you know, that this mining is uh, yeah, maybe not so easy and maybe a little bit dirty. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, that, yeah that's correct. So not every country is willing to produce uh, these rare minerals in their backyard. So they out outsource them to China. Yeah. And China at the moment produces like 60% of the world gallium and 80% of the world germanium. But uh, doesn't mean that they are called rare minerals, but doesn't mean that they cannot be pro manufactured. And uh, so true. everybody can manufacture them. It takes some time to, to set up the production, but it can be done. So kind of uh, some experts believe that uh, China is uh, kind of... Uh, shooting itself it's on the foot, foot yeah <laughs> i was i was just thinking the same thing because uh mm -hmm. yes if they um you know exp uh, try to curb the exports yes i mean in the in the short term maybe maybe they can achieve something but in the long term it might uh, prompt countries to start uh, you know um developing their own mines or to try to look for mines elsewhere exactly so if there are some other producers or some uh, other probably i don't know like um, zinc mines or like aluminium aluminium mines uh they uh, they will try their best to replace china because it's still about money right. and it reminds me of the case from uh, from uh, 2010 when uh, japan detained a chinese fishing uh trawler captain uh, was fishing in uh, disputed waters near Japan and this this captain was released very shortly after that like uh, 
maybe within like 24 or 48 hours he was back in China but Chinese government meanwhile blocked exports to Japan of, cru of crucial category of minerals uh, they were used in uh, like uh, hybrid cars and weird wind turbines and so on and after even releasing the captain Chinese government continuing to block shipments even said promised that in one month we will probably resume the shipping but they didn't well they that didn't. escalated quickly <laughs> yeah. out of nowhere I think you know China was just uh, you know, playing one of its little games and they knew they had the upper hand that moment. So yeah. they just, it, it just sounds put, like up that. Show, put up a show. But the result is that within eight years, by 2000, by 2018, Japan was able to replace all these uh, uh, Chinese uh, 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 export of these minerals and Japan is producing 60% of uh, what they need right now so you know, it's kind of uh, so it backfired. Uh, backfired for China yeah it backfired because it always backfires yeah yeah that, that can very well happen you know um, this is uh, one of the one of the things you know that uh, is ongoing in the so-called US and China trade war yeah. Oh, okay. Which you know started to uh, sort of come around around what 2017. It was shortly after Trump visited uh, Beijing. We played one of his videos when he's in the Forbidden City. Right, right. You know, having <laughs> this uh, quick uh, exchange about about the history. <laughs> so apparently Trump wasn't happy because Trump is a businessman about uh, un how unbalanced the export import uh, between China and America was and uh, like China was exporting to America like goods of like 530 billions of dollars while America was exporting back to China only like 150 so and China promised they will do something about that and they will try to uh, balance uh, this export import, but they failed. They failed. Ah, they see. didn't keep yeah, their promise. So, so, okay. <laughs> and Trump right. was, got really pissed off, and then he started this trade war. I mean, we can yeah. see. You know, it was. It was. It's not just related to Donald Trump. Uh, you know, other people they were investigating these things, so they uh, made their. Um, own motions, but uh, yeah, definitely Donald Trump really did get behind this because he uh, this, this was one of the things that he loved to talk about. Uh -huh. yeah, right, so now right, we right. have now we have uh, Secretary Yellen in uh, China trying to, I guess, patch things up uh, after <laughs> Anthony Blinken's visit that uh, didn't accomplish all that much. <laughs> so she's there for uh, what four days from the 6th of uh, July until mm -hmm. the 9th of July so let's see what will come out of that yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so they are trying to just continue the talks and they are trying to uh, uh, well, bring you know we know what China would like to get. China would like to have all the tariffs that the U.S. has imposed on them abolished, or at least, if not all of them, you know, at least some. You know, this uh, is something that China would like to get uh, done <laughs> in the near future. But uh, how realistic yeah. that is, we don't know. Right? No, that's not going to happen. What America is trying to do is to stabilize the relationship, minimize the risks of mistakes. Right when disagreements arises so that they, uh, they still have some channels to be able to talk to each other that's right that's what america really cares about what was uh, what was interesting was that uh, and maybe this is just my my conjecture but i saw right after uh, a few uh, a few hours after uh, um i saw that uh, that uh, 
Uh, there will be a meeting in Beijing between uh, Secretary Yellen and uh, um, Chinese leaders. Uh, China uh, appointed, or there was the news published that China appointed Pang Gongsheng in uh, as the uh, party secretary of uh, the Cent um, People's Central Bank of China. Uh -huh. Now, uh, and this is something you know that might have happened before or after who knows when the news might have been released but it seemed interesting to me that it got released just a few hours after the meeting was confirmed by the uh, by the media that uh, China is appointing a Harvard educated uh, economist uh, as uh, the party secretary of the central interesting to kind of uh, I guess to show that Hey, listen, we are appointing a real economist here, not just someone who has, you know, personal or uh, party connections. <laughs> so oh, doesn't mean that uh, Xi Jinping is not going to do all the uh, main decisions by himself right No, of now. course it doesn't mean that. Uh, <laughs> it's just, you know, like, a, a, it seems like a, a gesture uh, on the okay. part of China. This is just my conjecture, right? Something yeah, just that I took, out, I took out of this. And that uh, uh -huh. okay. Now we've done something. Now you know, U.S. It's your turn. I don't think U.S. is going to appoint someone that <laughs> went to the party school in Beijing. But uh, <laughs> it's it's supposed yeah. to indicate that the, the maybe the U.S. should uh, do something now. Yeah. Okay. But actually, <laughs> actually, actually is is uh, this is just a publication of the news but his appointment has to do more with the fact that China is trying to uh, kickstart its economy into gear because uh, the performance after COVID has not been quite as spectacular as uh, you know some people might have hoped for China needs America more than America needs China That's the only point. problem with China is it's like a crazy dictatorship similar to North Korea so you don't know how they are going to react if some some uh, new situation arises so this is the problem you just need to keep them uh, on the phone at least you can talk <laughs> that. that's a good point but yeah. spe speaking of that uh, when you mentioned uh, North Korea uh, you mentioned to me an uh, interesting study that was uh, looking at uh, the um, night lights. And uh, oh, this, is this is funny for especially when we mention North Korea because uh, you know when you look at the, at the map from the space, you can see North Korea is almost dark at night. Right. Yes. Because they don't have money to run the lights, you know. Uh -huh. This is very interesting. So basically, uh, this figures they are uh, provided uh, uh, to the guy who actually uh, put this data together right. called Mr. Martinez so uh, he assumed that all the figures that are about GDP they are provided by the all the democratic countries are correct which they are and uh, he compared them to the to the lights at night over the country and then he compared the same lights at night to other countries and what came out was uh, uh, basically the conclusion that uh, the other countries lie about the GDP <laughs> that's a big oh. surprise <laughs> yeah big surprise in the middle of in, on the left side, we have the democratic countries and, you know, of the lights, the intensity of the lights and the GDP so aligns. It's a, little, it's a little, yeah, it's a little more closely correlated, you know. Yeah, 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 right. In the middle, we have like a... Countries that, you know, not, are, that have been listed as partly free. countries. I and don't know what criteria the they though. use, but uh, but we can see, for example, if you go to the to the last part, you can mm -hmm. see a a much larger discrepancy. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Look at China. The discrepancy is huge. Yeah. yeah, it's huge. 
So yeah, so it indicates that China lies about the GDP. This has been an issue in the past. For example, um, I think it's been said uh, about Vinci, or maybe he himself made that this statement somewhere that he, uh, when uh, he's looking at the economy, he will he would be looking at. Uh, output and performance in uh, steel production or coal production these kinds of uh, you know big hard physical things where it's mm -hmm. harder to fake the data let's put it that way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. so that the so even he himself kind of admitted you know that he doesn't trust the official figures that all the industries yeah. are giving him and he focuses on some particular indicators well, what yep. do we see uh, happening uh, around the, the time that Xi Jinping became uh, the leader of China? So this is in 2012. We see, and maybe this is related to him, maybe not, but we kind of see the number of indicators that uh, China's National Bureau of Statistics publishes kind of going down, right? <laughs> so what does that mean if they don't want to publish more statistics? Well, they must be doing uh, great, better better than before, <laughs> if they don't right. want to talk about it. So no, no, it's no, no, no. a kind of a slowdown of China's economy that we can, we can um, see sort of coming around 2008. I mean, not completely, right? Chinese economy is still growing, but not as much as before. Um, I think it would be naive to think, you know, that uh, a country can keep up such an impressive growth like China has uh, forever. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the, um, China has tr uh, tried to find uh, solutions to, uh, um, you know, ha increase their GDP by doing things such as construction and development. For example, what China did was produce a lot of real estate. Um, yes. Here we can see, for example, here the real estate price is starting to fall. Now that could, yes. you know, that could indicate a lot of things, but uh, we know that in China there are a lot of buildings and uh, houses, apartments that are simply empty. You can maybe fit the, the population of France into <laughs> all of these projects, all of these developments. Right? Yeah. Because you know, when you're building something, obviously uh, you're constructing something, so you're spending money on materials. It's feeding the GDP, it's making it grow. But um, when when is the return on investment going to come? Um, nobody is very sure. Right? Mm -hmm. And with the prices dropping, it doesn't seem like the that people are uh, you know more and more interested in buying uh, houses that might be too expensive mm -hmm. yeah this was the problem it was always the problem that uh, uh, China as a, as a dictatorship always uh, depended on quotas so let's say thing yeah, yeah. you are the governor of uh, Liaoning and you have quota the because the first the central Chinese committee announces that the GDP for for this year will be 7% and you are obliged to fill in the quota. You need also to reach the 7% or higher. You know, the growth was 7% last year, you know, better, you know, make a, try to get it up to 7% this year. And you have to because <laughs> this is your job. So what will you do? You have to... Either uh, find some, some any way, any or. weird way how to do it, or, you know, you have to kind of uh, make your PowerPoint look better way, than... Fastest uh, way, <laughs> the safe way, was infrastructure, building, right? And let's say you don't I, have I, money. I, so I wouldn't necessarily do, say, say, the, say the safest because, uh, you know, sometimes you see some construction projects <laughs> where Jason, a wall Jason. might fall down. Right, but at that time it was like, whatever, we will be in debt, but, uh, you know, I have a problem right now. My problem is how to reach the 7%. So you just you just start these infrastructure projects, you start building apartment buildings, and if you don't have money, you borrow money from the bank, because, you know, whatever happens, 
next year this is mm, will happen next year and this is what they were doing so many many cities are signed that indebted that sign i in debt right now and because of this of these projects and uh, this is like, not, uh, not related just to real estate of course you know this has to do with a lot of other big infrastructure project right uh, i guess the the most uh, obvious one the most talked about one would be the uh, high-speed uh, railway network in China right compare mm -hmm. uh, 2008 to 2020 so you know in just 12 years this is an impressive growth but uh, you know you might uh, say to yourself but but at what cost does it come so you can see different kinds of lines some can go about 300 kilometers per hour some can go uh, above 200 some can uh, are still very fast and uh, normally there is a you know some kind of a, a logic between uh, <laughs> creating these lines to connect areas that have larger populations that are not too far away from each other you know mm -hmm. let's say I don't know Tianjin and Beijing or these places in Shandong where a lot of people live or maybe even here you know around Shanghai, Ningbo, Hangzhou <laughs> right. But what yeah. happened here? I mean, look at this map. It's kind of went this is, out of control. <laughs> yeah, this is like, a, you know, an anthill yes. being made here. So what happened was, you know, around, uh, I guess around 2000, after 2008, probably to stimulate the economy, you know, they would try to uh, build all, sor all sorts of lines, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even going as far as building a high-speed railway to Urumqi, to Xinjiang. Who's going to go there? I mean, uh, you know, the trains are, I don't know if they're half empty, but the, the tracks have a capacity of uh, several Talk about the maintenance. trains. The maintenance but they send, okay. you know, maybe you know? send third. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, no. nobody Maybe's knows it. when this is going to be paid for, right? <laughs> So, okay. so I mean, it does prop this. These are these kind of construction projects. They prop up the economy in the short term, but uh, you know, it, it might cause some problems in the future, right? They might have uh, spent this money in a in a country where there is more regulation, and I suppose where the market is more free. You know, these uh, things might be uh, spent a, a little more economically. You know, where mm. they might be needed. Right. With these long-term projects, you know, it's very hard to say, you know, how feasible are they going to be? This is not looking good right now. China is in big troubles. So, like, uh, like, uh, let me just mention just three biggest problems right now. Youth unemployment is higher than 21% and is still rising. Uh, yeah, the economic model that was driven by government stimulus and rising debts, especially in property markets, big problem. China's uh, the first first quarter of this year, uh, lots of people are very very optimistic about the economy, but the second quarter was terrible, awful. I mean, uh, the. China is not going to reach this target of 5% of uh, GDP plus because this unemployment which is very it. high shrinking population problem uh, market debt crisis so China is in troubles not not much investment is coming to China right now uh, UN Chinese UN is uh, continue to fall uh right now it's uh it's more than seven yuan for per dollar which is like a psych psychological psych uh, psychological uh uh kind of a value that they would like to uh keep the yuan at right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah the level the psychological level is less than seven now it's more okay. than seven mm -hmm. and it's going to going to probably get only worse so Chinese economy is weakening 
you know we can say it's not growing as as fast as it uh, used to which is a natural occurrence but it hasn't uh, you know it has bounced back a little bit after covid but uh, obviously um, if you think about it uh, these uh, um, long term restrictions imposed by covid have uh, must have hurt the economy i mean if you mm. if you look at the uh, um, statistics if you compare it to uh, some other countries here we can see china doing quite well right around 2021 when they sort of had the situation under control and then <laughs> you know uh, and other countries have problems but then you know other countries have uh, started to recover and uh, uh, china's performance economic performance kept going down because mm -hmm. uh, you know it's uh, much more difficult to get anything done when there are lockdowns right and just let me tell you that these numbers are from from china these not numbers are right. not very far they probably are this yeah. is what china says what it is like like uh I remember in 2007, Li, Li Keqiang, who later became the Chinese Prime Minister, said this, these numbers are just approximate numbers. They are not real numbers. 2007, he said that, you know, smiling. I see. Yeah? And another big problem is that how China calculates the GDP. China is calculating the GDP not by the outcome, but the income. You know, how much you put into the economy. How, what okay, well, was the value of the goods actually is produced, but not not the actual value, not the outcome, not uh, how much you actually pay for the goods, right? Which is totally, this is the, the opposite way, how, for example, America or other countries... Turned upside count. down, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, another problem. So the GDP is not precise. Maybe it never was, never was. Yeah, but you know how, how they say economists say that uh, expectations are the most important thing. If you expect the economy is doing well, it will it will do better than it would. You know what I mean? So if if you expect the economy all will do worse than would actually do, you know, without this negative expectation. Who's expecting uh, what uh, from China now? But right now, the other. <laughs> There were high expectations in 2021, but right now the expectations are, are down. So if the expectations are lower, maybe even lower than they should be, which means the economy will economy will perform even worse. Understood. Yeah. 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 Well, That's keep in mind, you know, people have been a lot of people, you know, have been uh, locked up for a, a few months, and in uh -huh. general, over the past three years, you know, a lot of people have. Uh, had a lot of economic troubles and now you're mm -hmm. expecting them to spend so it's kind of uh, difficult to uh, motivate people to spend uh, more right? and it's, yeah. going, it, it's it's going to be a problem for at least a little while i think yeah. further down mm -hmm. the line nobody knows i mean uh, it has been suggested maybe china should you know provide some stimulus packages pump some money into mm -hmm. the economy but they don't want to do that. I think they are very, very careful about uh, where to um, put some money next. Yeah, let's say the Chinese government is right now in, uh, going to lower the interest pay, uh, interest, uh, so that people will kind of there was no there will be no reason to keep the money in the bank, so okay. it will uh, indirectly force the people to invest. <laughs> to spend it, yeah. yeah, to lift the house prices again, bolstering confidence of homeowners. Well, um, let's let's see, you know, how that's going to work out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. But you mentioned, I mean, you know, this is just an example, you know, China does does statistically lie about uh, things that you know are hard to verify, right? Yeah, China always lied, like uh, during the Mao Zedong era, you know, they lied about the harvest. They said the harvest was like 480 million tons, that uh, China was already 1958, surpassing even the United States. And, you know, so China decided that this is how they will pay the, the Soviets back for the factories the Soviets were building in China. 
and they realize that you know they have only 10 percent what the officials were reporting so the it's a gross difference millions of people died, died died of starvation because of misreporting yeah Liaoning constantly lies this is a very very infamous province in China when everybody knows that the ofi officials in <laughs> Liaoning province which is north of Beijing they lie about the figures and you know like just comes to my mind how China lies about uh, how they perform on these PISA tests or this uh, kind of international rankings of uh, yeah, education of schools rankings. and students, yeah. Yes, they just, for example, other countries' ranking is like for the whole country, and then uh, China's ranking is only for like Shanghai. Okay, well, that's uh, that does not represent the whole country, though. <laughs> Yeah, but it just gives you the, yeah, just for the outside, they say Shanghai, the China, right? So Chinese students are performing that, that's, very well. That's, that's like saying the Ivy League is the United States. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not the same. Yeah. China must be, you know, increase this reputation or boost its reputation whenever and at whatever it can. So... The questionable thing is, you know, how believable is that going to be? Yes, we know that it's not. We know that uh, China lies. Always. Not sometimes. Always. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's been, yeah, unfortunately very it happened so often, you know, that, you know, what kind of uh, credibility are the statements and the figures that you publish going to have, you know? People will always be trying to find some ways to verify them or rather than take them at face value. Yeah. No, you cannot verify anything in China. I mean, yeah, in, that's, in that's fact, the second thing, you know, how do you... In fact, there were some Chinese people, I think there were some economists, they were doubting the official figures. This year, these people ended up in prison just for questioning the official figure. You cannot even question anything in China. Not tell the truth. If you tell the truth, probably you get executed, or you, you end up like uh, uh, Yu Wenliang, the doctor who leaked this uh, COVID. Uh, that COVID was the new virus was spreading in Wuhan. So what happened to him? Yeah, well, he got arrested. And he was he was uh, threatened, you know, to, to stop spreading rumors. Yes. Doesn't matter that one week later the rumors proved to be right. There were still rumors. Yeah, it was uh, you know a, a ridiculous reaction on part of the uh, local government in Wuhan. You know, but what yeah. were what were they thinking that this problem was not going to spill over? No. Unfortunately, this is a systemic problem, you know, that uh, exactly. <laughs> doesn't just plague the local governments, but, you know, goes uh, all the way up to the central government. Yeah. And the funny thing that you told me, like, funny thing is that uh, the officials, they know that the, their, uh, the top officials know that uh, the other lower officials lie about the figures well yeah i mean you know they they are aware of that you know because if you yeah, if you have it. quotas or you know if your career depends on you know how successful you are wouldn't you try to uh you yeah. know uh, improve your choice. chances a little bit you fake the numbers and get rewarded or you report real numbers and get punished yeah so uh, choice is easy this is the problem that uh, autocratic uh, countries and uh, regimes have, and this uh, this is how we get uh, wars like the one in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now the the U.S. yeah is uh, definitely trying to prevent something uh, like this happening in the Taiwan Strait, trying to have some communication channels open. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So U.S. is, is just send uh, Janet Yellen, the U.S. Uh, Treasury Secretary, as a some people say as a good cop. Uh, okay. So, 
because China acts like a criminal, so China needs to be treated like a criminal. So must be bad cop, good cop, bad cop, good cop. Because you know, this is what works on criminals. So she's the good cop right now. Yeah. <laughs> so who, who was the bad cop? Lincoln was the bad cop. <laughs> It was also good cop. I don't know who was the bad cop. Trump uh, maybe. I, I, um, uh, let's see. I mean, you know, China is trying to signal, I suppose, that, uh, you know, they're, <laughs> they're taking the uh, economic situation more seriously. Yeah. So this is, can be seen like a positive signal on the part of China. But politically, <laughs> what has been in the news this week, uh, you know, this is a lot more horrible than any positive news that we've seen oh yeah talking about a new law i'm talking about uh the fact that the anti-espionage law in china oh. has been mentioned and the fact that uh the hong kong government has just put a bounty on some democracy activists that well. have fled uh, Hong Kong and then now uh, reside abroad. It's very interesting. How about we talk about it in our next episode? Let's do that. All right. Then yeah, take, cool. take care and I'll see you later. You too, Tito. You talk All to right. you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye.